Hi, welcome to Kibitzing with Kagan. I'm Cheryl Kagan, very proud to be the Senator for Gaithersburg in Rockville. With me today is the CEO of the Gaithersburg Germantown Chamber of Commerce, Marilyn Balcom. Marilyn, thank you so much for taking, a, for taking a break from all the important work that you're doing to join me today. It's great, it's, it's, it's always great to talk to you, Cheryl, and this is oh, wonderful, yeah, thank you. Thank you. So you have, I wanna start with your background, then I wanna talk about some of your past, some of your present, and then some of your possible future. So from your past, uh, you've had a wonderfully diverse background with organizational psychology in the arts, uh, as well as in business. You've been at the chamber now for 15 years. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the path that got you to your current job? Uh, sure. I, I, the way I like to put it is I, I just can't hold down a job, right? So I hop around. Uh, I started as an accountant a long time ago. Uh, I did a very short period as a mental health counselor. And then I got my degree, uh, my doctorate in organizational psychology, and I worked at the Department of Energy for a very long time. Uh, what got me into community-based work was I found myself spend, going downtown every day to work and spending the evenings and the weekends doing volunteer work for my community. And I decided to make a change. I wanted to do community-based community work. And um, I'm very fortunate to have worked with BlackRock. I worked for the county for a, a short period of time at the Up County Regional Services Center. And now I'm here at the chamber and um, 15 years, I can't believe it's been that long. Uh, and I love it. I love the fact that I, the work I do is for my community every day. I love that. So I think we first met when you were at BlackRock and- oh great amenity that is for the up county and for the whole county. Uh, why don't you do a, a 30 second commercial on Black Rock before we come? Yeah, to Black Rock is so fabulous. So it's a performing arts center, education and gallery space, a, a renowned gallery space. And uh, so there's something for everyone. The way I like to put it is it's a professional art center in our community. And they're going strong throughout uh, the pandemic. Uh, they have really wonderful classes. And if you haven't been there, you should check it out. So definitely, I, I, I agree. And they have a wonderful new director who's an old uh, pro, uh, buddy of mine from the nonprofit. Yeah. So, and the architecture is gorgeous. So definitely. And, right, Lynn Arndt's doing a fabulous job. And if you've never even been there, just walk in there, you will be astounded. Definitely. All right. So the reason you're here is because of the, the chamber. So over the 15 years that you've been at the helm, talk about some of the priorities, some of the accomplishments and, uh, and some of the ways it's changed over that period of time. Sure. So when I took over 15 years ago, um, I mean, the, the chamber is 71 years old. So um, it's it's been a stalwart in this community for a very long time, uh, merged with Germantown at 20 years ago. So um, the focus had been on local business and local uh, shopping, shopping local and working with small businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, how we've changed through the years is that we really have a seat at the table in our legislative program. And so we really, so much of what happens in Rockville and in Annapolis impacts our business community. Mm -hmm. And we've stepped into that space in a very strong way. I think also not only from a legislative perspective, but uh, transportation, land use, zoning, master plans. Uh, we're right in that right now. Right now we're looking at the Lake Forest master plan. Mm -hmm. um, that's a very interesting, very integral to, to our community right now. So, um, so I think that's the biggest change. Uh, the thing that remains the same is that we are a local hometown chamber and we, we've managed to keep that focus on our members. So let's talk about your membership. What would be some of the reasons why someone would join the G Gaithersburg Germantown Chamber? Yeah, so all businesses join for a, a number of reasons. And so small businesses, the, their primary reason is they, wanna, they want new, new business. So they want referrals and we give them the opportunity to meet with other businesses, to meet with potential customers, to meet with uh, the community and to get more business. It's the, 
at the end of the day, they want to increase the value of their business. Our job is to give them the opportunities to do that. So we focus on, on that. That's where our networking comes in. That's our bread and butter. Absolutely. We also, from a small business perspective, um, you, every small business needs a bank, needs an accountant, needs paper, needs to buy supplies, needs um, all these services. So look around the room. You're going to find your accountant. You're going to find your attorney. You're going to find the person that, that uh, can bring deliver your, your paper. So uh, it's resources for businesses. Um, and then also from a legislative perspective, and particularly during this crisis, we have come into our own We've, we've been, we've provided so much value for our members just in communication, just mm -hmm. letting them know what's going on. Um, and so I think there are lots of reasons. Um, yeah. Good. Uh, and they get to work with you and your fabulous staff and learn from you. So that's a good thing. So as someone, as the person who fancies herself as the Senator for the nonprofit sector, uh, the chamber also welcomes nonprofit membership. Uh, talk about what segment of your membership that is and how, what similar services you offer and what different opportunities, if any, for the nonprofits. Yeah, so we we consider the nonprofit as a tax status. Our nonprofits are still businesses. Love they it. still have to buy buy services, sell their product, get get board members, get donations. At the end of the day, they've got a, they've got a they've got a bottom line, mm -hmm. and and so we help them do that. We're the only chamber that offers a nonprofit rate. We think it's important to give back to our community. And so we encourage nonprofits to join the chamber. Uh, we do an annual nonprofit showcase at Smoky Glen every year. And it's such a great event. Uh, it's, our, it's actually our biggest networking event. And we allow our um, nonprofits to come get a, a table, a booth um, to show off their wares. And with the idea of to educate the community to get donations, to get donors, to get board members, and, and we love that. Do you have the date scheduled yet for 2021, or is that TV? We do not. Um, it'll, it'll be in the fall, if assuming that we're 100 people are going to meet somewhere. <laughs> it'll be in the fall. Smoky yeah. Glen's a great place to have it. Delicious it's, food. Okay. Yeah, so, um, so Marilyn, we're going to get to the pandemic and stuff in a little bit, but let's talk about, um, about advocacy. And yeah some of the work that you've done. So the bus rapid transit, the quarter city transit way, uh, we're looking at 270 and stuff. Why don't you talk briefly about some of the challenges in transportation that the up county faces? Yeah, so we've, um, I-270 is, is a, a, an issue and a problem. Uh, getting the Watkins Mill interchange was a huge for us. And thank you, Senator, for your work on that. Uh, that was a big deal for us. Um, we need an all of the above approach um, to, uh, to movement in the up county. Uh, we're working on, right now, the uh, planning department is looking at, it's called Corridor Forward, um, looking at I-270 and looking at transit op options and bringing in bus rapid transit, bringing in um, uh, the Quarter Cities Transit Way, as you mentioned. And for the first time ever, uh, we've heard them talking about WMATA Metro uh, to Gaithersburg and Germantown. That's a long-term strategy, but it's the first time that I've heard them publicly state that they should look at it. So that's one of the alternatives that they would hopefully be looking at. Have you um, always done, done any um, inspection or learning about sharing about monorail? Yes, so we we supported the study, the monorail study. We've had uh, them come in a couple times. Uh, so we've gotten the gotten the presentation. Um, we're we're all for looking at the study. I mean, it it makes sense. Uh, of course, just because it looks good on paper doesn't mean that it will actually work. But yes, we support the study of that. Mm -hmm. And also, Mark Mark train the Mark train system is crucial. We already have heavy rail in Germantown and Gaithersburg. And if we could expand Mark service, that would be really great. Agreed. Um, yeah. For those who are hearing about monorail for the first time, it's a fascinating, think outside the box, much less expensive, uh, not disrupting traffic uh, option that some business leaders have been uh, proposing and talking about a bit that I think many of us find intriguing and look forward to learning more about. Yeah, it's great. Marvelous. 
So Marilyn Balcom, you, after all your advocacy at the city level, the county level, the state level, and probably even the federal level, although I'm not aware of that specifically, um, ran for county council in, in uh, 2018, and you were a tremendous candidate that I was very proud to endorse. Why don't you talk about why you decided to run, what you learned, and how that, how that was for you? Yeah, so it seemed like the next step. Um, I'd been working in the community, as I said, I, I really enjoyed working in my community. And uh, I, and I work with a council, I work with the county council on a number of things in my day job all the time. Um, and I feel like I have this skill set to to work with the community, work with the council, and make sure that the uh, up county area is represented in, in a very strong way. Um, and so I threw my hat in the ring and, uh, and it was a fabulous experience. Uh, it was really great to, to meet so many people and to get so, so much response uh, in my messaging. And uh, it was great. Um, I really enjoyed it. It's great. And, and, and learned so much, yeah. Yes. So Marilyn came in fifth in the top four one. And there were, remind me, 32 candidates? 33. 33. 30 candidates. So tremendous accomplishment for a first time candidate. And uh, yeah, so we may come back to that if we've got some time. Uh, let's pivot to COVID because that has thrown such an extraordinary wrench in the works for our small businesses and for our large businesses, as well as all our neighborhoods, our kids trying to learn at home and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and well, I'll get to that. Okay, so why don't you talk about how work at the chamber has changed during the coronavirus and how you're serving your members? Yeah, what so we, um, you know, we we moved back, we moved home back in March and uh, got set up just like everybody else. We all had to scramble, um, and we worked at home for a, a good while. Um, I'm back in the office. Uh, I feel safe um, in the office. Uh, and, and we rely on safety first. I mean, we're not doing anything that's counter to, to what our experts say. Um, uh, but, and we pivoted for our networking events. So we have two or three networking events a month online. We've got the COVID, the, the Brady Bunch squares and we, we do breakout rooms, we have speakers uh, and it's been good. We've, we've had great, we didn't skip a beat. Uh, of course, technology, we had to figure that out, but um, we, we're, we're doing that pretty well. I think the biggest change for us is um, the, the communication. I, I consider this to be um, a synthesis of data to, to take so much information. It's not as if there's not information out there. It's overwhelming the amount of information. Yeah. And so on a daily basis, we synthesize data and send that out to our members in meaningful small bites, um, particularly the grant funding yep. to try to help our members get funding. Um, it's so very complicated and our members are really in need of just somebody to hand, hand, hold their hand. I mean, there've been many a times that I've been on the phone with someone as they're filling out their application, helping them fill it out. Uh, so that's been very rewarding. That's great. Um, and to be clear, when you say you're back in the office, I just want to clarify for folks watching that it's not your entire staff, that it was no. one person at a time rotating and now. Yeah, so so we, we were rotating one person at a time coming in and and just this week, uh, we now have two people in at a time. Uh, we're in our own offices, doors shut. As soon as we walk out of the office, we have our masks on. Um, we, uh, and, and we have a whole routine of sanitizing. Um, so we're, we're being very safe. Great. Yeah. So while we're on the topic of the coronavirus, one of the aspects of my district that makes me so infinitely proud is Gaithersburg and Rockville are part of the home of our high-tech biotech corridor. And we may have from Novavax and AstraZeneca, two of the next, next vaccines. So can you talk about how the chamber engages with uh, some of the tech and biotech businesses, bioscience businesses? Yeah, we are the tech corridor, certainly, I-270 tech corridor. And uh, we work, we, we have members th throughout the tech, uh, biotech, uh, AstraZeneca is one of our members. Early on, we had a program where they came on and talked about the vaccine as it was being, uh, as 
as it was going through their studies. Is that um, publicly available? Is that something that non-members could watch or is that really only- uh, I, th I, I think it is, yeah. Um, I would have to check with, uh, okay. with but yes, we recorded it and it's, right. it's available. Um, of course, so much has happened since then. That's the thing about um, every day there's new information. Right. Uh, but we, our biotechs are our members yeah. Um, and we work with them just like we work with others. One of the issues with biotech firms is workforce development. That's a space that we, that, that's part of our agenda item. We need to make sure that from MCPS to Montgomery College to uh, Johns Hopkins um, and, and making, and universities at Shady Grove, what an asset we have in the yes. universities at Shady Grove. So we, we feel that workforce development is a major uh, player in terms of, of our economy, our local economy. I'm so glad you talked about USG universities at Shady Grove. There are a shocking number of people who still don't know about it. So yeah. I describe it as bringing the best and brightest uh, professors, the best classes and stuff from around the state, from other university uh, hubs and bringing them to Montgomery County. So you don't have to drive to the University of Maryland and Eastern Shore to learn about hotel management and hospitality. And you don't have to uh, drive to UMBC for, you know, for a business class or whatever. So it's, um, it's terrific. It's a great option. Yeah. yeah. And they're, and they're, they're a member and uh, very community minded. Yeah. That's great. So let's talk for a bit, if you would, as the session has begun uh, in Annapolis, what are some of the chamber's priorities in Annapolis? If you had a magic wand, what would you have us accomplish this year? And do you work closely with the county and state chambers on your advocacy efforts? Uh, yeah, so to answer your first, to your second question first, um, we, the, the, the local chambers and the Montgomery County Chamber work work very closely throughout the session um, during during the session, and um, also with the Maryland Chamber, I I sit on their legislative committee as the representative from for Montgomery County. Uh, we rotate, um, and it's my turn, um, and so that's 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 wonderful because we meet every Monday and go through the various bills. And, and um, so one of the issues, two big issues, one is the, this liability issue for employers. That's, that's going to be, that's a national debate. That's a national discussion. Uh, as we start opening up, uh, we need to make sure that employers are not legally liable for COVID in the workplace. If, if they, respond appropriately with, with CDC guidelines. So liability for employers is an issue that we'll, we'll be watching closely. Um, and then the other thing is we under, we know that the budget is going to, we're gonna have problems with the budget. And Senator, you know how difficult it's gonna be when you go into the, the, the list of needs is always greater than the, the, than the pockets of money, right? Mm -hmm. We wanna just make sure that, that the business community um, doesn't get, is not overburdened in terms of additional taxes um, because, uh, I mean, we're there all the time saying no new taxes. This year in particular, um, it's, the, the burden can't fall on business this year. Um, so we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna be working with you on that. Right. Obviously the stop by our offices option won't be there this year. Have you revised your strategy as to how to be an advocate and how to communicate with us? Yeah, I think the biggest thing that we're gonna have to do, it, it, the session's gonna go fast, I think. And so we're going to have to be just more on top of it than we ever were, because uh, as you will have to figure out how it's working, right? So we'll, you know, we'll be calling, we'll be emailing, um, we'll be texting, uh, and posting. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but I think that I, the biggest change for for me as a as an activist is going to be the schedule. Yes. and making sure that we have the most timely information. Um, and I, I, while I speak for the chamber, I've got a board behind me. That, so I've got, to, I've got to educate them and get their ideas and get their input and, and vote on these things. So it's, it's gonna be challenging. Um, and we're gonna, miss, we're gonna miss coming down there and, and seeing you all. We're gonna miss having you down. It's gonna be really odd, but we're all gonna do the best we can. The timing question that you mentioned, I just want to amplify and reinforce. 
So in normal life, in real life, and I'm not even talking about pandemic, but in the community, the, hey, I've got a question for you. I'll get back to you next week is fine in a 90 yeah. session. And goodness knows if we have health problems and all that, it could be abbreviated again this year. It's kind of, I'll get back to you in an hour, two hours tomorrow, but it's not longer than that because by that point, we will have voted on it, amended it, passed it, killed it. And so there's an urgency that uh, business leaders, uh, yeah. even nonprofit leaders aren't always aware of. Right. And we, we have some experience with that because the county council is working differently right now. And so they do a public, they, they introduce something, the next week there's a public hearing and there's a vote right away. So we, we're, we're getting used to this faster pace. It's, yeah. it's insane. It is insane. It is insane. Yeah. So um, before we go to the uh, fast five, um, let's get a glimpse of your future. You've been at the chamber for 15 years. You, uh, we have two new, the voters approved um, a ballot measure to create two additional county council seats. Mm -hmm. uh, you did an extraordinary job and came very close to being elected to the county council last time. Uh, Marilyn, can you give us a glimpse of what 2022 might look like in your life? Yeah, I, um, I, I would love to run again. Uh, I think it would be great. I, I feel like the same, um, the same scenario, for my, the message is the same. Uh, my skill set is even broader. Um, and so I feel confident in my ability to do the job. That has never wavered. Yeah. Uh, so we have a redistricting commission that will start. Uh, so right now, I, while I can be very bold and say, yes, I'm going to run, I don't know what what the districts are yet. And so we're all gonna wait. We'll, we'll wait and see what the districts are. And um, all things being equal, uh, I, I assume that I'll run. My, I'm currently in district two, that's uh, council member Craig Rice's seat. Mm -hmm. uh, he's termed out. So there will be an open seat uh, in my district. Um, I'm assuming that will remain open uh, throughout the redistricting process. Uh, so yeah. Uh, I, Great. I'm going to do it. So to be clear, we have one member of the council of the nine who's a woman and she is term limited. And so yeah. there will be zero men and zero real business leaders and advocates. Sydney Katz has been a small business owner, actually, but bringing another perspective and uh, and the up county, another up county voice, uh, really important. So that's Thank great. You. All right. So. Marilyn Balcom, Fast Five here. I'm nervous because I can't imagine what these are going to be, but go ahead. <laughs> so my staff and interns help me brainstorm on these. So, uh, so they're always fun. So first off, um, you are always traveling and doing exciting and fun things. And it's very um, wonderful to follow you on social media and your beautiful daughter, Emily. Uh, if, what is your favorite city in the world other than Gaithersburg? Um, well, I have to say London, even before the fact that my daughter lives there. Okay. <laughs> uh, but I love London. London is a fabulous city. It's small enough to get around and there's so much history and so many things to do. I love London. Great. Um, if you could travel to another decade in the past, where would you choose and why, or when would you choose and why? Yeah, I would have to go with, you know, the, the twenties in Paris, thirties. 40s, you know, Paris, Paris before the war. Nice. Paris yeah. anytime, but yes. I, <laughs> um, have you picked up a new hobby or habit during COVID that you'd like to share? Um, so what I, I am exploring uh, DC. So I, I go downtown all the time and um, I always pick my favorites and I'm a, I'm a big, uh, uh, visual arts person. Uh, so I, I love DC, but I'm exploring new. Every Saturday, I pick a destination that I've never been, a pocket of the city that I've never been, and I go and explore. And that's been fun. That's fantastic. And it keeps me sane. Curious, do you go metro or do you drive? I drive. Um, I used to, I used to metro. I just haven't been on the metro since all this, with all this. Um, uh, but yeah, I drive downtown. And there's parking right now. Yeah, you know? that's, that's true. That's true. Okay, here's here's one that my intern Lucy came up with. Who would be your celebrity BFF of all the celebrities? Who would you like to be kind of besties with? 
Oh, that would be hard. Um, you know, maybe Amy Poehler. Nice. You know, just because I think she's fun and I love Parks and Rec and, you know, she would Perfect. be fun. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. And then the fifth question that I ask everyone, Marilyn Balcom, what is your secret superpower? What is a hidden talent, something that you're really good at that most folks can't do? Um, it's not exciting, but I am really strategic. <laughs> so I, I see the big picture and I, I'm really good at taking huge amounts of data and boiling it down and coming up with strategy. That's, that's my superpower. Totally valuable. That's great. That's great. It's not really, you know, it's not as sexy as flying, but <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Um, Marilyn Balcom, thank you for all that you do every day and especially during COVID. Uh, it's been a pleasure to give it with you today and I look forward to seeing you in person again very soon. Well, I appreciate it. And Senator, you've done so much for our community and it's been wonderful to, to, to work with you through the years. And uh, I wish you all the best as you go to Annapolis. It's gonna be a crazy time. Indeed it will. Stay safe. Hey!